Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Prada Museum for another of our weekly sessions in English made help with the support of the American Friends of the Prada Museum. Today, I am standing right in the middle of the central gallery here at the Prado. If you've ever been to the Prado Museum, then you know exactly where I am right now. To one side, we have monumental Venetian painting. On the other side, we have extravagant, splendid Rubens. Right in front of me, I'm looking at the magnificent Charles V on horseback. And of course, behind me is room 12 where we have the one and only Las Meninas by Velázquez. So with all of this pulling our attention, I wonder if you've ever stopped to look at two very curious mythological paintings and think about why they're here. These are two of the Furias by Titian called Titius and Sisyphus. So what are the Furias, the Furies? The Furias refer refers to the four paintings of Titius, Sisyphus, Tantalus, and Ixion being punished for having challenged or offended the gods. And they're called the Furias because they refer to the Furies, which are not actually the men being punished. In Greek and Roman mythology, the Furies were the female deities that were associated with the dark and the underworld and carried out the punishments of wrongdoers. So they were like the personifications of vengeance and of suffering. But there's a long tradition of, in Spanish of calling these paintings furias, the furies, even though it's not actually an image of the furies, of the deities themselves, but of the punishments that they inflicted. So in art history, when we talk about the furias, we're really referring to these four paintings by Titian and then other representations of this, of this mythological subject. And uh, uh, so here in the Prado, we have Titius and Sisyphus, but Tantalus and Ixion have not survived to today. So who is this? Who are we looking at? Who is Titius and why is he being punished in this way? Well, he was a titan and he forced himself onto one of Zeus's lovers. And for doing so, he was punished by having his liver eaten, pecked away by a vulture or by an eagle for eternity. Every day, his liver would constantly regenerate and the punishment would begin again. Why the liver? Well, because the liver was associated with lust and with passion. And then we have Sisyphus. Sisyphus was punished uh, also for eternity, <laughs> having to push a boulder up a mountain every single day, a back-breaking job. And when it would get to the top of the mountain, then it would fall back down, and he would have to start this all over again. And this is because he had divulged the details of Zeus's affair that he knew about with Aegina. Zeus abducted Aegina and he took her to an island and uh, when Aegina's father went looking for her, he went to Corinth and then he met the king of Corinth who was Sisyphus and he told him what he knew about his daughter's whereabouts and for giving him these details, Zeus punished him with having to put, push the boulder up the mountain. Now there really is no iconographic precedence for Titian's painting. There's no significant paintings of this subject before Titian. Although there is one drawing by Michelangelo of Titius in 1532. But in painting, there really are very little resources to draw on. Titian knew the story of the Furies. People knew the story of the Furies, but they didn't know really what that was supposed to look like. So Titian had to be creative and he had to invent this iconography really uh, by himself and to bring them life in, in canvas. And one of the things that he tried to do is, is um, recall ideas of Christian hell by adding elements like the serpent, like fire, like chains, all things that make, up, make us think of eternal punishments in the underworld like in a Christian hell. But Titian's painting, painting really takes a kind of a different approach to the subject than Michelangelo's drawing did. But they do both have something in common, which was common for both of the artists in common at the time, which is looking to classical sculpture as models for their figures, and particularly at one Lao Kuan. 
La Pointe was the massive marble sculpture, this monumental sculpture of this muscular man who is writhing in pain as snakes are taking him down along with his sons. And uh, the mythical allure, the effect that this sculpture had on artists really since its discovery just cannot be exaggerated. Michelangelo was actually at the site, at the archaeological site when it was excavated because they called him as an expert to see if he could help identify, um, identify what the sculpture was. It was considered the most supreme in art, in terms of beauty, and also in the way that it represented pain and agony. So the Furies are our challenge to paint. They are large format, as you can see. I mean, these are titans. They're not just men, they're titans. They're more than men. And they're in extreme pain with contorted, twisted positions, complicated gestures. And other artists were intrigued with the subject after Titian. So although there was not a lot of precedence, there was a lot of popularity with the subject after Titian painted it. And artists really took it on as, as a challenge, as an artistic challenge that required both skill and imagination. In the main entrance of the Prado Museum, if you come in through the Goya entrance in the rotunda, you'll see that there's uh, two of Ribera's Furies, which are probably some of the most important reinterpretations of the Furies. So who would commission something like this? Who would want a painting like this in their house? Well, this was commissioned by Queen Mary of Hungary from Titian in 1548. Queen Mary of Hungary was the sister of Charles V, the Emperor Charles V, the Holy Roman Emperor, and he named her the governor of the Southern Nether Netherlands. And it was commissioned during a time of critical, a critical time, a really tense time of confrontation in between the Holy Roman Emperor and German and uh, Protestant princes. Mary asked Titian to paint these paintings, the Furies, just one year after her brother had defeated uh, the Protestants and the, the, the German Protestant princes in the Battle of Moburg. So Mary was a powerful woman and she was a really important patron of the arts and she hung these paintings in her palace in Binge or Banj. And by doing so, she really turned the mythological subject into a political allegory. This was a warning to anyone who would think of challenging the authority of her brother, Charles V. In mythology, the Titans actually were figures who initially were close with the gods, and uh, they dared to challenge the authority of the gods, and by doing so, their punishments were eternal and severe. And the message in Mary's palace would have been abundantly clear that if you're going to challenge the authority of the emperor, that your punishment would be severe and eternal. So I hope you've enjoyed seeing a little bit of these mythological paintings by Titian, and we'll see you again next Wednesday for more weekly sessions in English.